Let's start off with Safaricom and Equity Bank, of course, teaming up. And M-Pesa customers are going to be enjoying more services, and now they'll be able to transfer money via their cell phones. Uh, quite extraordinary, given that the competitive environment is getting quite heated, uh, especially after we've seen new regulations coming to the fore. Yes, thank you very much, Eleni. It's always a pleasure. Basically, your observation there about Safaricom is very good. Actually, we are looking at Safaricom as one company which is very, very creative in terms of uh, its product offering. And uh, such a product, especially for its Mpesa client base, which is significant in the market, is very, 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 very welcome, especially as at now when the competition is seeming to affect its uh, bottom line. Well, just taking a look at the most recent regulatory, uh, regulatory environment that has changed uh, regarding the telecom sector, uh, given the fact that the CCK has now allowed for the, the change in numbers and you'll only pay a very small fee, how is that going to change the environment? We know that Safaricom could lose some market share uh, if this does go through as expected. Yes, that's a very good to note. Basically, Safaricom has enjoyed the lion's share of the market in terms of uh, the mobile uh, products. And because of uh, this uh, mobility, especially in terms of uh, moving numbers, uh, over the recent past, basically, people have not been able to move numbers. And actually, for you to be able to move numbers, you have to either pay or change say, uh, significantly. And that becomes a bit of a challenge. And because of that, uh, change, regulatory change definitely is going to allow a lot of people to be able to move and uh, be able to take advantage of new tariffs as well as other competitive uh, 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 offers in the market. And that definitely is going to affect Safaricom uh, customer loyalty. But uh, mm -hmm. it seems Safaricom are doing their best to be able to still keep their customers in terms of some of the products that they are uh, offering, like now this M-Casho uh, product. Mm, exactly. And this is why it's quite interesting that Safaricom just keeps being uh, innovative to try and secure that they do hold on to their market share. Uh, looking at the likes of Zane and Barty, how do you think they're going to be shaking things up now that uh, the new regulation has come to the fore? Well, definitely Zane as well as the other uh, companies, we are seeing them beginning to have uh, offers that are going to encourage a lot of people to move to those other uh, product offerings. And because of that, definitely they are going to also be ch uh, challenging Safaricom. But it seems Safaricom seems to be trying to take advantage of whatever opportunities it still has, especially in terms of their research department coming up with new novel products, which definitely are, are being able to go into markets that are not, not yet tapped. And because of that, Zane as, as well as these other uh, mobile providers definitely have a lot to do. Equity Bank, other news out for this company. It has announced that it signed a 4 billion shilling uh, loan agreement with China Development Bank at a rate of 3%. Uh, clearly quite instrumental in terms of the credit facilities uh, for uh, the bank as well. Well, just like Safaricom, Equity Bank is also doing excellently well in the banking sector. We are seeing it coming up with new novel ideas every day, being able to take advantage of uh, the mass market in our Kenyan economy, which as of now still stands unbanked significantly. And uh, their product, especially in terms of the SMEs, is uh, one very good and uh, very welcome move, especially looking at uh, some of the areas of the economy that are yet to be vibrant or even robust because of access to credit. And because of uh, this new product, definitely we are seeing Equity Bank developing a lot of uh, sentiment uh, demand as even the share price is significantly rising as we speak. National Bank of Kenya came out with uh, some nice numbers, 11% pre-tax uh, profits, and we saw uh, customer deposits up 36.7% to 45.3 billion shillings, earnings per share gain of 7.3% uh, to 1.18 shillings per share. So a good set of results. Well, uh, looking at its peers, basically National Bank is trying to catch up and uh, that is very, very welcome, noting that uh, being a mostly government-owned bank, we've been seeing it uh, not doing very fairly well, especially because of its loan book, which had uh, a lot of bad loans, and uh, that is what they have been trying to clean up. And it seems now they are now on the, on the profitability path, and because of that, uh, we are seeing their earnings go up, and hopefully you're going to even get them paying a dividend. And uh, once that comes mm -hmm. in, you're going to see a lot of uh, demand on the shares, even, even uh, investor confidence. And uh, that is already being felt in terms of uh, the bonus issue that they offered as well as the 11% the uh, profit growth. Mm. Turning our attention to the oil sector now, Kennel Kobo is to issue a, a 1.5 billion shilling commercial paper, short-term financing facility to investors, uh, basically expansion program underway as well. Your view on this, do you think it's going to be good for the company going forward? 
Well, first of all, as a commercial paper, basically it's showing a lot of investor confidence and also because of the regulatory requirements for, be, for them to be able to issue such a, such a, a note, basically is uh, showing that uh, Kenan Kobil is fairly stable and it's going to create a lot of confidence in terms of the firm. And also looking at their expansion strategy, which basically shows that they are going into uh, the Eastern African region and uh, also trying to tap into some of the regions that, that uh, some of the oil marketers have been get, getting out of, definitely is strategically positioning them. And because of that, you're seeing the share price also continuing to rise and also the share split is also creating a lot, a lot of speculative activity on that stock. Mm. The shilling has come under significant pressure, especially on Monday. We saw it hit a 12-year low against the dollar. Of course, we have that interest rate decision uh, tomorrow. What is your view? Do you think that we'll be seeing rates unchanged? Well, uh, looking at the shilling, basically there's been a, a bit of a concern, especially because of looking at the import-export effect of uh, the, sh the shilling weakening. And because of that, we are hoping that the central bank is going to be able to come in and, and at least try to address, not really maybe to, to start doing any uh, buying and selling, because basically we've been seeing a central bank trying to or, or let the market be able to control itself, but definitely trying to ensure that uh, we are going to have uh, the, uh, the shilling being a bit stable.